Hello there, everyone. This is Scott Hendrickson, part of the development team here at MindPlace. And today we're on the forum, which is at MindPlaceSupport.com. And I want to take a look at a great application that has been provided by one of our Procyon users. It is called the Visual Segment Developer. Uh, here it's version 1.5, but it is now in version 1.5.2, which you can get to by going to the last post in this thread, which will always give you the latest versions. But our Procyon user here, Mark Turney from Florida, has taken a lot of his time to develop what is an exceptional application for creating sessions on the MindPlace Procyon Mind Machine. It allows you to have a visual overview of all of your settings to get an idea of the complex interactions between the various settings available for the LEDs to create your sessions. So let's go over and take a look at that. I encourage you to come to the site here at mindplacesupport.com and download the version so you can follow along. But let's begin. So over here on uh, my Windows machine, uh, which is actually a boot camp partition running in parallels on a Mac uh, running Windows XP, we've downloaded the Visual Segment Developer and it's here in the folder. So you'll see that it's actually an Excel spreadsheet. So Microsoft Excel is required to run it, but hopefully all Windows users will have a copy of Microsoft Excel being that it's one of their core products. So let's launch that. This is using Excel version 2007. So as it opens up, it opens to default settings. This is just a fresh copy, so I believe that it will remember settings if you have previously worked on a project, but this is a clean version. And you can see that, let me open my Procyon editor here opening up a new Procyon session you can see that the settings are mirrored across now because these are the defaults and it makes it an easy starting point to begin our exploration so I'll go ahead and collapse that so you can see that really the visual segment developer is an extension of the Procyon editor and later we'll look at how to integrate those two but it has several features and functions that aren't available in the editor where you're particularly there just dealing with numbers, trying different combinations of numbers and testing them. Here you're able to see a visual representation. So let's go ahead, for instance, and turn on the red channel. We're set at a square wave with the default settings. And let's go ahead and map that. And here we are. So this is the square wave running across 10 seconds at a frequency of 1 hertz. So that is one wave cycle per second. So this gives us a nice visual representation of how the waveform would actually appear in execution. And that's the square wave. So let's go ahead and look at a sine wave. All right, took a little bit longer to calculate that. And we'll look at a triangular wave as well. Now these are the three types of waveforms that are available on the Procyon, which is a very unique feature of this particular machine because most light and sound machines only offer the square wave option, which is essentially on and off. So instead of just on and off, you're getting a nice smooth transitions between the peaks of the waveforms, which creates a lot more gentle slope and cycle for smoother waveforms. And again, that's unique to the Procyon machine. So having looked at the sine wave, let's go ahead and add another channel. And we'll accept these default settings and let that process. You can see I have a sine and a square. So, the red sine wave is coming gradually up as the green is turning on and off. Now, probably the neatest feature of this software is the ability to 
get an approximation of the colors that are generated in the gradient display. So we checked the gradient on box and that's going to calculate for a moment. There's a lot of number crunching that's going on in the background so it does take just a moment. So here's our color representation and this is just an approximation because behind closed eyes you're going to get a lot more of the red that bleeds through and the other colors are lessened quite a bit in relationship to the red. But from a mathematical standpoint and if one were to use an eye open display these would be a fair representation of the colors that you might experience. So looking at that we can see that the combination at the highest points where the peaks meet is where we're getting a yellowish type of tone and then the feathering along the edges, you can see a red feathering moving into more of a mixture of green areas here, is giving us this feathering effect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and set the green to a sign as well. And don't be startled that it may appear that the red disappears. We see it's processed and come onto the scene now and the green will come and lay right over the top of it making it appear as if the red has disappeared whereas in fact these waveforms just coincide perfectly but the color reflects that and the color is showing it as a yellowish tone the combination of full red and full green showing a yellowish type of tone but let's take and change the phase here of our green and we're going to set that phase at the halfway point which is actually 180 uh, the range here is from 0 to 255, so the midpoint, 127, is 180. Let's go ahead and graph that. Sometimes you have to push return so that Excel will accept the number input. Alright, so now we can see a nice helical type pattern, a helix type pattern. And it starts to become visually very interesting as well as giving a good idea of the interleaving involved in color mixing. So as the red is fully on here at 255 at its maximum amplitude, the green is off. So they are interleaving and changing each other. So as the red goes on the green's off. As the green comes on, the red is off. So in theory this would create a alteration between the red and the green. Now in practice I find that actually to get a fair mix between the two you're going to want to reduce the red quite a bit. So let's, go, let's take it down to around 16 or so. And so this is actually going to give us, in practice, more of an alteration between red and green in actual impl implementation on the Procyon itself. I'm going to go ahead and return back. Let's go ahead and go back to full, just so we can see. So that is with two of the LEDs on. Now, as we well know, one of the greatest features of the Procyon is that it has three LEDs, red, green, and blue. So let's go ahead and add the blue channel. And let's put it at a much lower value, in fact, the lowest value available, which is one-tenth of a hertz. So now we've taken the blue down to its lowest setting, one cycle every 10 seconds, as a square wave. Now, one visual idiosyncrasy of this particular mapping, the graphing done by Excel, is this curl on the end of the waveform. So it's really not being displayed as a true square wave. Now the interesting part, adding a square wave here, is that it really changes the colors 
that are available while the blue is active. So in its upward cycle as the blue goes from its lowest setting at 127 all the way up to its highest at 255 maximum amplitude across this five second range here then it's affecting the color mixing of the other two LEDs significantly. And once again as I had mentioned the red is going to be a very overriding effect here. So in true practice you're going to want to reduce the amplitude on that red if you're wanting to approximate this color range.